Lagos, coming to Lagos, wanted to meet with him. He said, no, he's no longer in Lagos. That is in Enugu. I said, oh, how come? Because he really grew up, did all of what he was doing in Lagos. And he said, well, COVID came. What happened? He has staff, and his house, he found that he would have to lock down with his entire staff. And uh, uh, when COVID was easy, you know, when we learned how to manage COVID, he needed, uh, his people would have to be coming from somewhere. And he couldn't tell where they're coming from. For all he knew, some of them were coming from Ogun State, travel several uh, uh, change of buses to arrive at his house. So being able to fight COVID was not in the cards. But he has an expansive compound here in Enugu. And he could bring his relatives to live with him. And by doing so, he was able to manage uh, and know where people are coming from. Very important. So what he learned was Akko, Inola, that this is that place where you can go and you will be safe and you will be able to relax. But he's able to do this because he's retired and he, his resources for support for living do not depend on what he was getting in Lagos. So he could be anywhere and actually live. So he chose to come and live in Enugu. So when I was talking to him about um, when he would be going back to Lagos, he said, no, this is it. He's now an Enugu man. Now, the issue therefore is how can we make it possible for us to live here? All of you, I can, as I see you, it's highly impossible that you will be coming to TEDx if you are not reasonably educated and you are here to gain knowledge about something very important. You are enriching your mind. Now, for those who are so educated, don't often have the that place where they can find the sort of jobs that are so meaningful for them, other than being in government. I know that some of you have found a way to create jobs for yourselves, which is wonderful, because I've found a lot of young people creating jobs, which is very important. But what about those big uh, companies when you who you can go from being an officer to assistant manager to manager to director all the way to managing director. You know, the growth line. The problem is that a lot of our people who have capacity to build such industries have not been able to come here to do it. But they exist. When friend, previous speaker was speaking, he's talked about the people who um, are doing things in various places. Those people who are doing things and creating things are not coming here. So you don't find the high rises. It's not that it's important to have a high rise, but the investment that will necessitate a high rise need to be coming here. But they're in Lagos. Some in Abuja, some in Port Harcourt. You will see that a lot of people born uh, in places like America, that is the Americans themselves, the Europeans themselves, that they grew up where they a lot of times where they live and they're able to go to work from home. What we do here is 
we go to somewhere else to work. You can go to school here at the University of Nigeria, but to get decent job, a lot of our people live here. They leave to go to Lagos, Potakot, Abuja, or even make that trip uh, if they don't get decent visa to go to Europe and you see what is going on with the immigrants there. Two, what we are interested in is how to make it possible for our people to live here. Um, so some of us got together 2016 and said, well, let's talk about economic development because we have, you can see that you have economic blocks throughout the world the Southern Economic Development uh, Organization for South Africa, South, Southern Africa Economic Development. You even have West Africa Economic Development. You have uh, European Economic Development, and so on. What's the value of that? The value of it is that when we join together to seek anything outside of your environment, you do better. We don't have that here in the Southeast. And we need to have that. So what we wanted to do was to create this Southeast Economic Development company or corporation. But it has to be driven by private sector. Because we noted that when it is run by government, huh, you know how government how governments work. Uh, you seek to election, you come in, the first six months at the very uh, least will be spent in forming government, right? After the government is formed, you begin to work. By the, uh, by the third year, you are preparing for election. Is it not? How much time does uh, a regime actually devote to doing something very important for economic development. Not long. And so we said the private sector must drive it. We must do those things that governments can't do or we find difficult to do. And certainly, things that state governments will find difficult to do. For example, you know we have what is called the Anambra uh, basin, which is a place where you have oil and gas. But the oil and gas you'll find below ground, not harvested. And the reason is simple. There's no transport mechanism, no way to, to transport it. Because when you produce gas, it's either that you, uh, you make it liquefied, where it is, or you must transport it by pipe. There's no transport mechanism. So we said we are going to create a gas pipeline in the southeast so that if you harvest the gas, you can transport the gas within the states and outside. That's one thing. But it costs a lot of money in billions of dollars. But we have a lot of our people who work in the oil and gas industry who are interested in this sort of thing. So we've energized them to begin to do feasibility study, to begin to work on uh, how to do investment. Another one is rail. Uh, I won't get into the politics of what's happening with rail. But it is totally possible for there to be a rail network within this environment. And the state governments, the role of the state governments will be providing right of way. That's what the state governments can do. And the private sector will be responsible for the rest of the investment. This is possible. Looking at infrastructure, all these are what I'm talking about, with infrastructure. Because the infrastructure, when you have it, 
there's a truth I've been evil about it to follow our open. Eh? Give me a man. Some of you may not say. Okay. That it to follow our open. To get it. And then get that. And then more as well. What it really is saying is, you give me the opportunity, the challenge, and I just leave me to it. So what the infrastructure does is to provide that platform. And all of you young people will be able to take it up. If you have good roads, if you have electricity, if you have these kinds of infrastructure, I am confident that you'll be able to do your own. Build the companies, individuals, as individuals, or jointly. So my own and my team, what we took on is electricity. We tried to get the electricity uh, for, we joined with governments to try to get uh, the uh, Enugu Disco. We didn't get it. We won't get into the politics of it. But we got our back as a metropolis. And what we wanted to do was to demonstrate how electricity works. And then you must have adequate amount of generation. When you have that, and you improve distribution infrastructure, the electricity will work. Proper management. Because what we said well, during privatization is ensure that you have uh, technical people with technical capacity and financial capacity to come. Those are not the people who came to take the electricity industry. That's what we want to demonstrate in Napa. And we have literally, very likely done so. Some of you, if you are looking in your social uh, media system, you may see that just recently in South Africa we signed with Afroxim Bank to support us in completing the ABA integrated power project. The whole idea of the ABA integrated power project is that there is inbuilt generation capacity and that generation capacity is more than what ABA needs. That's how it works. And the distribution is improved. If you look at how much it cost to buy a Nugu Disco, which was $126 million, in our bank alone, there's investment of more than half a billion dollars. That's really what it takes. So imagine what it should have taken to bring a Nugu Disco with the standard where you don't have blinking electricity, electricity delivery. So that's the other one. Finally, I want to tell you about a very exciting project happening in the southern part of Abe, Enyimba Economic City. Have you heard of Enyimba Economic City? No. no? Okay. It's a 10,000 hectare uh, new city. All, it's, all they are doing there is to build infrastructure, roads, water, electricity. We supply electricity actually to the place. Uh, Etc. In the uh, 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 net, uh, uh, telephony system, telecom system, ICT. That's what they, they deliver. And then they uh, sell uh, plots of land to international investors. It is a free zone, an economic free zone. The government, federal government is an investor in it. What is the advantage of that? What it means is that. You can find large textile companies coming to build there. You can find automotive companies coming to build there. You can find all kinds of industries coming from everywhere. Because when they manufacture products there, the product is, is sold to anywhere in the world as if that product is manufactured in their own country. And that is going on now. And it will happen. But it's not something you go and begin to make a lot of noise. What I want to tell you is that we have to have what I call a blotter, water on a blotter type of development. A blotter is an absorber. When you drop water uh, on it, 
it absorbs and it begins to spread. If you drop water on a large surface of water, eventually every place will be water. If you think about it, an innocent type of uh, industry is that drop on a blotter. In a by economic city, that, that kind of drop to water on a blotter. Geometric power project in Aba is like that. We want more projects like that so that all of us here will be able to live here, work here, earn well, so that the sort of income you earn will be able to take you to anywhere in the world. That's what I would like to see us do. Thank you very much.